Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. We have the mayor of Newark, Ross Baraka, joining us. And I was going to say do it all. I almost I know, said do it all. we can't help it. And we have Dupree <laughs> Kelly joining us as well. You got to say the name because that's who you want people to, to see when they go vote. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's what I said. You got to put the accent on the E. D- Dupree. Dupree. D- Dupree <laughs> Kelly. How are y'all this morning? Do it all. Right, good, right. good, 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 Dupree, good. Good, good. Is it good. stressful around this time when it's election you know, season? It's always stressful. I'm used to it. But okay. uh, I, I think just being in the office period right now is just stressful. It's mm-hmm. just a stressful time. In, in America and being a mayor now is a very stressful uh, job. Mm, why? I mean, I'm sure yeah. why, but why? I mean, especially not, for uh, in, in cities like Newark, uh, demographics like ours, black and brown cities mm-hmm. that are suffering so for so much. You know, you have COVID going on. You had the police violence incidents. A lot of cities were burning at the same time. Mm-hmm. Still have the regular issues that you uh, have to deal with. But uh, so it, it becomes stressful. I mean. Being a mayor of New York right now is a stressful situation. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as everywhere. You know, you try to fight crime and police brutality at the same time. And mm-hmm. also encourage people to go out and vote. That's uh, not an easy thing to do, too. It, it's not. You know, our, our folks, uh, especially, you know, they just don't trust government. They don't see uh, the the outcome of that. And 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 the, the best example is what's happening now in this whole pushback on against Roe versus Wade. Man. I mean, people were saying that mm-hmm. voting for Hillary would be like voting for Trump. But you can see that's not true. Mm-hmm. Right. So. The ramifications of voting for Donald Trump gave us those three Supreme Court justices that are now rolling back uh, what they called settled law. Uh, so it, it's going to have a detrimental effect if that happens. Mm-hmm. Now, what do we do about, you know, I see crime increasing everywhere now. Absolutely. Now, so what do we do to try to control some of that or, or get it down? Well, I, I think, you know, it's, it's difficult and, and you have to deal with both sides. So you have to have kind of concentrated and focused deterrence on, on crime and violence. We know like in most cities in America that have this issue, uh, that there's a small percentage of people that are causing 80 to 90 percent of the problems in the city. You have to really focus on who they are, uh, police-wise, and not this wide net just trying to arrest and beat everybody. That's when you get all these complaints. You're just focusing on on those issues and do real police work. Uh, and then on the flip side, you have to have like the social services, like we have the Office of Violence Prevention. You have to have all of those folks in there trying to do conflict resolution, targeting the same people, same families. Uh, because when somebody gets shot, it's a domino effect, mm-hmm. you know, targeting those families, uh, hospital-based intervention. You have to do all of those things on both sides of it. You can't do one without the other. And that's what people are doing, one without the other. So it's difficult to bring it down. I think it's always important to discuss local elections, too, and why it's important for people to go out during local elections and what our responsibility is, right? We feel like we vote for somebody and then certain things happen uh, and a lot of things that we want to happen don't get done. But what do we have power to do once we vote somebody in office? How do we make sure we exercise that? You You have to stay engaged. People think like, voting is like you press a button and go home that's not that's not how it works right you you vote for somebody to represent you and you're not always going to agree with this person mm-hmm. you have to uh actually vote for people who you think have your interests generally at heart and then you push them to do the things that you think should be done you continue to go to meetings you stay engaged you understand what the issues are and, and you get involved constantly because sometimes they may not vote or participate in a way that you want them to participate but you have to stay engaged uh and make sure they're not causing you any harm or any deleterious itch effects to your community. You have to stay on them. All right, and Dupre Kelly, I'm saying your full name, so when people <laughs> go to vote, they see that on the ballot. Right. You're also running for office, so can you tell you what you'll be rep- Can you tell us what you'll be representing? Um, so I'm running for the West Ward Councilman uh, on the mayor's team, and in the Newark, New Jersey, we have five wards. So I'm running for the West Ward where I grew up at, Red Man grew up at, Rod Digger, Queen Latifah. You know, it's gonna be an honor to, to govern where I grew. You know, as long as everybody get out there tomorrow, well, as long as they get out there, I don't know whether it's today or tomorrow, right? It's today. Today. All right. Today. Today. All right. As <laughs> long as everybody get out there today and, and vote, you know, we're going to be able to bring the West Wall forward and continue to bring Newark forward. You know, so. How, how, does, how does being born and raised in the West Wall of Newark, you know, how is that going to help you with that role? Well, I think it helps me because I'm a son of Newark. Mm-hmm. I know those I know those streets. I know those avenues. You know, I, I came up in that ward. I was born in that ward. I, I went to school in that ward. 
I was part of the programming in that ward. And that's one of the reasons why I'm running for councilman as well, too, because I want to create some of the same and similar opportunities that I had growing up in that that area that that kept me out of trouble for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, we had uh, a David Wright Association that that had baseball and Ron Howard with the Optimist League and Senator Rice, who had, you know, uh, football and and Rufus Johnson. They kept me out of trouble. So I want to be that that factor in, in some of our youth you know, and create more opportunities. You know, it's a different day and time, so technology plays a part and Mm -hmm. and financial literacy plays a part. You know, once you create opportunities, then they're less likely to get into the troubles that they're getting into. And you've been doing that work already without even being in office, which is great. So I love a show and prove. Like, you've shown us that you've been in the community, you've been working with the kids, you've been working with technology, and so you've been putting in the work. Yes, yes. I mean, we've been doing a lot of work. We have a uh, devices for all program where we give away computers to the youth and the seniors. I run a nonprofit organization called 211 Community Impact that focuses on education and literacy, but not just literacy, you know, in the traditional sense of ABCs and one, two, threes, but mm-hmm. in a sense of making you uh, civically aware of what's going on in your community, you know, letting you know about council meetings and getting involved in you know, things of that nature. I I believe that, like you spoke about earlier, local elections are very, very important. I I look at it as trickling up. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say trickling up is because sometimes when you vote for the federal elections, you don't always get that right away in your local areas. But when you vote locally, or if you don't vote locally, it it affects you directly, you know, from the smaller things to the little things. I want to ask y'all both a question, man, because whenever people talk about Newark, they always want to start with, you know, the bad, right? And to me, I've always loved Newark. Like, Newark is a very special city. So I want to ask both of y'all, what makes Newark special? The people of the city, to me, makes mm-hmm. it special. Mm-hmm. I mean, the kind of love that folks have, the perseverance, uh, the commitment to each other, the community. It's like a family in the sense that, you know, we fight with each other, but if mm-hmm. somebody else say something about you, mm-hmm. you'd be like, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, you, know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, so Newark, Newark has that. And, uh, you know, at the end, th- those families, those old families, generations, we understand the issues that we have, and, and we work hard to make sure we over, overcome them, uh, which is what we've done for a long period of time. And I think now we're beginning to see real fruits right. uh, of our labor. Uh, what do you Mayor think, Mr. Kelly? I saw you did an op-ed, too, about yeah. people um, investing in Newark, but but actually not the people from Newark, and people yeah. just coming in, corporations, buying a lot of property and real estate there. So Absolutely. can you talk about that and what you can do to combat that? Sure. Um, you know, that's... Before that, we've been always, like, investing money, and we have these meetings. We get guys to buy property and, mm-hmm. and do all, and we, we've been doing it. Uh, and uh, we invested $20 million into just people building houses for families of three or four that make $34,000 a year. So we're working hard. The problem is you have a group of folks who have a multitude of cash, mm-hmm. you know, capital on hand, who are buying property from individuals who are selling it to you and you. You can't stop people from doing that because if you want to sell your home, mm-hmm. right. you're going to sell your home, especially mm-hmm. if somebody's buying it for more than it's worth. Uh, now, or yeah. they go going to the right. foreclosure sale, the sheriff sale, and they're buying 5, 10, 15 properties at a time. And what they're doing is raising the rent. on those. So they're not intending to flip the properties. They're not developing them to flip them. They're buying them to rent them. And so they're, they're two or three family homes. They're renting them at higher rates, sometimes 100%. Uh, raise uh, raising the rent. And so what it'll do, it'll attract people in areas that are saturated, the market like New York City, mm-hmm. uh, Hoboken, Jersey City, all of those places. Because, well, you know, housing is, 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 is a shortage now, so people are looking for it, particularly uh, if you're in that income bracket where you don't make enough uh, to get what you need from the government, mm-hmm. but you make too much. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you make too much to get what you need from the government, not enough to afford what the market says. So people come over here, come to Newark looking for that. Uh, and so what we're doing, uh, we first we're going to make those LLCs give us a name, an address, a phone number so we can know who you are. That's number one. Uh, number two, we're going to take all city-owned property and, and land-banked property uh, and put a deed restriction on it. That way it has to, has to stay affordable. It can be sold at affordable rates, mm-hmm. whether it's home ownership or rental properties. It has to stay that way. Mm-hmm. And if you come in and you raise the rent uh, above a certain level, we're going to put a surcharge on that to dis- disincentivize you from raising it at levels that are too crazy year over year over year. So you can do that in five years, but one year you can't raise it at, at a certain amount. And so we're going to put those laws in place locally, uh, and that'll mitigate it, but it won't stop it. Right. I, I was going to say, you know, for, for most, like what Charlamagne said, but sometimes when people hear about Newark, they hear about the, the bad things per se. 
But talk about some of the things that you do in Newark, right? And the reason I say that is I, I deal, I meet a lot of mayors, I meet a lot of governors, I meet a lot of councilmen. But the fact that you are so entrenched in Newark, right? So talk about some of the stuff that you do, where, whether it's uh, encouraging people and teaching people how to buy real estate, or it's talking to the brothers in jail, or having gang members uh, talk to brothers to try to stop beef that you hear about, or it's the turkey drives, or all the things that you've done that people don't know about. Talk about some of those things. Well, one, we we turned Section 8 home, uh, people who get Section 8 on vouchers, we made them homeowners. We, we t- took about eight of them. We got another eight coming that. We took their voucher and turned it into an opportunity for them to use their voucher to own a home in 15 years. We worked on making that happen. It's a model for the rest of the country. We continue to push it until HUD says, okay, let's do it, and, mm-hmm. and, and they want to see that happen. Today, we're going to make an announcement that we're taking 40 kids and a pilot there uh, that's between a 1.8 and 2.5 GPA, and we're paying a full ride to college, four right. years, uh, with the help of EOF. Uh, and we're going to do the same with Rutgers and NJIT and all these schools uh, as well. I mean, these are the kind of things we do, the guaranteed income, where we we giving residents up to about $6,000 a year mm-hmm. uh, cash payments to spend on what they think is necessary uh, for themselves. So we're trying to uplift as many people as we can. And the same thing in terms of the men's meetings, uh, women's meetings that we have to encourage people to buy property, to get city contracts. We train them. So play, explain what the men's meetings are, because I love what the men's meetings are, and I'm, I'm praying in the women's meetings as well that other mayors take that into consideration in, in mm. possibly what they're doing, because right. it's people from the neighborhood teaching people from the neighborhood. Right. We 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 have a monthly meeting. All the guys get together. Uh, I bring people there that that are businessmen. Uh, the last meeting we had a guy who owns 15 Papa Johns. Mm-hmm. Uh, black dude from the city of Newark, born and raised in the city of Newark. And that's important so the people in the audience can see he's from my neighborhood, from right. Georgia King Village. Absolutely. So they have these mm-hmm. excuses about the hopelessness that people have. Well, I can't do this. This is not for me. Well, this guy's from your neighborhood. He lived right next mm-hmm. to you. He got 15 Papa John's. Like, it's time for you to step up. And so those are the kind of things that we talk about. Even when we was changing the lead service lines, right? We, had, we put $120 million uh, into that even more. I brought some of the contractors to the meeting and told them, look, I, God, I got up and said, I have a $40 million contract. The mayor is making us find local black and brown subcontractors to be involved. I need some, right? So a couple of people took advantage of that, right? Uh, we were able to give, unfortunately, about 4 or $5 million out. I mean, a couple of people may, became millionaires as a result of right. that. But we should have been able to do more, right. a lot more, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and, that, and that we have to get ourselves ready for that. And some of those guys are now going on to other projects, because New Jersey has 400,000 lead service lines. We changed 23,000. So now they're primes. One of the guys that was a sub on a contract in Newark is now a prime in Trenton. He's got a $7 million contract on his own. And he wouldn't be able to do that unless we helped him. And we gave him the upfront capital mm. to be able to take care of his balance sheet, to buy the equipment, right? And then we knew he was going to get our money back because out of the contract, what we did, and this is a Mary and Barry playbook that I stole this mm-hmm. part. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of the contract... We made we took our money off the top, right? And so you got a three hundred thousand dollar contract. We gave you a certain amount of money. We're gonna take our money off the top, you know, monthly. That way you don't have any issues with, with paying us. You don't have to go to court. There's no mm-hmm, bank stuff. Right. And now your credit is better than it, than it was because now we taking our money off the top. You gotta got deal you. with whatever wow. else you gotta deal with. That's why you gotta vote for uh, <laughs> Mayor Baraka and uh, Mr. That's Kelly. Right. I want to ask you too because we, we skipped over you. Why is mm-hmm. Newark special? Newark is special, man, you know, for a lot of different reasons. But I, I believe that, you know, we're, we're a gateway city. We're a gateway city. Anytime you're traveling up north, you want to go to New York City, to Mecca, you got to come through Newark, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And, and we're special, like the mayor said, because of our people. Because we're that gateway city, our people feel like we're the gatekeepers to so much prestige, so much energy, you know, that you have to pass through. And a lot of New Yorkers, you know, they feel like when the, when the hustle and bustle of New York City come, you know, gets tough, they come over to New Jersey. They come over to Newark. Newark, man, it's just, it's a renaissance city. Mm-hmm. It's a special place, man. And, you know, I think that the people who have been there doing this turmoil, doing this struggle, you know, they deserve to, to, they want you to understand and they deserve that they want you to be, they want to be part of that renaissance, yeah. that renaissance that is coming. And I, and I got to say why the mayor is sitting right here too in, in public, I think that this mayor is the best mayor in the nation because he understands the people. You know, he understands the people, the people because he's one of them. Mm-hmm. And and when you even ask me that question of, of the, the ward that I grew up in, mm-hmm. that I came from, that's why that I, 
I feel like I have the same ability in my ward. The way that he touches our city by being from the city, that's the same way that I feel about my can, ward. Can I uh, say something about Du? We was at Dupre. We, I was doing a long time ago when I was just an activist out in the street. I was doing a, a, a truce between two blocks, uh, Bedrock and, and uh, Zoo, Zoo Crew, crew mm -hmm. uh, going at each other. I'm in front of City Hall trying to get them all together. I'm not a, no elected official at all. On the side, you see a, a young cat with his hat on and so forth and so on. That guy was do it all then from Lords of the Underground, mm -hmm. helping us to create a gang truce in the city of Newark before it was even popular. Wow. And, and, he, and he had to do that, you know. He, that was when he was out here doing his thing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so this is kind of come all the way back 360 to begin to, to, to represent mm -hmm. on a real level. It was Dupre, more when did you realize that you wanted to run for office? Um, It, it was a... It was a while, you know. I started the nonprofit, and I was doing all of the work in the nonprofit. And and to be honest, you know, I was seeing people get get love in their cities, like Trader Truth, and you know, I would see Nipsey, and I would see you know Killer Mike, and all of these guys get love in their city. And I was saying to myself, wow, even before I was in Lords of the Underground, I was doing this in my city. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's ever mentioned that, but mm -hmm. I wasn't doing it for any fame. But I, but I just kept on doing it and kept on doing it. And then the people started to say, man, why they never mention you when they talk about people who, you know, respects their city and does for their city? And I was like, hey, I don't know. And then, you know, I just kept doing it, kept doing it. And then the people started to say, man, we want you to represent us. And I was like, I don't know if, you know, I had the same understanding of what politicians were in my mind, too, coming out of hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, my thought. But the thing that made me think differently was our mayor. I mm -hmm. knew our mayor was from our streets. I knew that how he loved our city. So I sat down with him on, during my first run, and he was honest with me. He said, man, I, I can't put you on my team. I can't put you on my ticket, but I think that you'll be a great councilman in this city. You know, and that's, that's what his words was to me. And I said, all right, do you have a problem with, with me running? He was like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't have a problem with you running. That's your choice. And, you know, I said, you know what? I'm always on his team, even if I'm not on his team. Mm -hmm. So I just ran. And and the people, you know, it wasn't a loss. We didn't win the seat, but it wasn't a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, we gained so many things, so many relationships. And I believe it put me to this point now that I'm on the mayor's team. So, yeah, so, so how did that happen? 100%. Like, what made you decide, you know what, now's the time to be on the team? Well, he deserves it, right? Mm -hmm. the, the first time I ran in 2014 for, for well, first time I ran and won, I ran when I was 24. Um, I had a, I was fighting a huge machine, man. A lot of money against me. I made alliances with people, mm -hmm. and and uh, people put people on your team when you mm -hmm. make alliances. Mm -hmm. you, uh, we want you to put this guy, and that's what we did. And so we ran with that. This is the first time that I really get to honestly choose people that I get to run with, right? And I wanted Dupre to be on the team because he's already doing the work. He's like he's a councilman already up there, right, right? right? He's already out in the street. The people already know him. He's already have the programs. He brings the kind of energy and youthfulness that we need uh, and, and can attract younger voters to the table. And I said, we need him on, he, We need him with us. You know, all of that that he has and the love for the city, we need to enhance what we're doing by adding him to our team. So what, what does the role entail, uh, Dupre? The West Ward Council role. Well, I mean, you know, the council, uh, the councilman, uh, municipal council is legislation, right? We we create and and vote on on the, on things that we want to see happen in the city. But in a city like Newark, New Jersey, it's more than just legislation because you have to be in, engaged with the residents. You have to be mm -hmm. with the people. You have to be face to face with them. And it's five different parts of the West Ward, like it's five different parts of Newark. And every spot has their differences. You know, you have Fairmount that, that might want to talk about uh, drug selling and crime. And, and then you have our upper Ivy Hill who just want speed bumps and their lightings to be bright. Mm. You know, and then mm. you have uh, Lower Vellsburg, who is dealing about with parks, want more parks and activities for the youth. Then you have the West Side section, who who feels like they're not even included in the ward. And then you have overall people just want to see economic growth. They want to see things that are happening downtown happen within our in our wards, up in our number blocks and mm. our number streets. So you know, it, it takes engagement. It takes being with the people. And I feel like I've already been with the people. I've I've been doing things with our with our school systems, from getting them lift buses and things of that nature before I was, you know, even running. So now it's just gonna be now I'm just asking for the title, even though I've already been doing the work. I was gonna ask, you know, a, a couple of years ago before Biden was in office, uh, when they were throwing in presidents, uh possibly your name came up. 
right? Ross Baraka, possibly running for president. Never. Is that something that you ever thought about or anything like that? Never. No, no. why not? I, I, I don't want to be the president of the United States, man. <laughs> I, I, I just, I would never want to do that. Why? I mean, my father I think it would, would be great. Uh, as a joke, my father would say the president of hell is called the devil. But <laughs> <laughs> right. What about, what about governor? <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's people in the state are mm-hmm. are saying that all over the place, trying to push me in that direction, putting the bullseye on my back. But <laughs> I'm running for mayor now, you know. Right. G- like, God and the people first. take me to that direction, you know. I- I'll do that. I'm in a playoff game now. I got to win this before I get to the championship. So you're only against one person, right? Is only one opponent. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So it, I-, I make this happen, then. You know, if, if that becomes a reality, you know, I'll, I'll definitely think about it. Because sometimes the people tell you what they want, and you have yeah. to listen right. to that. Like, for you, right. Dupre, and for you, Mayor Baraka, yeah. the people are saying, why aren't we talking about Ras Baraka as governor? That's what some people are saying, definitely. <laughs> yeah. they, they, without question, some people are definitely mm-hmm. saying that. I mean, because of the work that we've done in Newark, all, and, mm-hmm. and because of all of the difficult times that we got through. We, we've had difficult, difficult times, man. COVID was terrible for us in Newark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. The lead service line. I said I was trying to uh, figure out why God made me the mayor when all the lead service lines stopped working <laughs> and COVID happened and all this city started burning. And everything started happening at the same time. Right. Some some of my colleagues walked away. Wow. Yeah, they, some colleagues. But you understand away. the frustration. No, of, of course of the people. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. I because I'm there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 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 there, and everything that they deal with, I have to deal with it too. Mm-hmm. Like I live in the the neighborhood. Like I don't like live on the outskirts of Newark. Right. I live there, right in, right in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. I see yeah. Queen Latifah broke ground on a new development that you guys mm-hmm. are doing, Rise. Incredible affordable housing. Yeah, yeah, yeah shout out to the housing. Queen, Yeah, man. she's doing great work, man. And I, and I wanted to do some more stuff, right? And in a tough neighborhood, too. She's yeah. not downtown. You know, she in a tough neighborhood. So she's going to revitalize that community and bring some energy and life there. That's so dope. How, how you think the marijuana industry is going to change? I mean, Jersey, but also, you know, Newark in particular. Well, I, I think it gives opportunities for people uh, to get into a, a, a business uh, that's multi-billion dollar business. It gives people the opportunity, new opportunities, uh, if, if, if the state and, and local folks uh, enforce what needs to happen, that we'll get this. And, and at first it's going to happen slowly, right? Because everybody's still a little timid about allowing these things to take place. Mm-hmm. The people are. Uh, you know, and, and and once that begins, I think people will see not just the, the cannabis business directly, but all of the kind of ancillary and supplemental businesses that have come up because of the cannabis business, right? Whether it's transportation or security right. or marketing or mm-hmm. IT, all of that stuff is important. Uh, and we got to get people to, we've been talking about that at the men's meetings. You got to get people to understand it's just not the cannabis business right. itself. It's all the other businesses mm-hmm. that are tr- that will happen because of the cannabis. Mm-hmm. Accessories. Right. And, and we, we need to be involved in all of that. Everybody can't do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, we get caught up in that. Two people open a barbershop, now everybody want to be a barbershop owner. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So there's a whole bunch of other, somebody got to bring the clippers in. So Somebody right. can make the bags, the That's pouches, right. That's right. things like a that. A delivery that service. Yeah. Delivery right. service, yeah. Exactly. So I think it's going to have an incredible if- effect mm-hmm. on our economy. What does yeah. it look like for you in Newark, the cannabis business? Because clearly, like you said, there's a lot of rules and restrictions. We don't know what exactly it's going to be, but in your head, what does it look like in Newark? Well, you know, we we uh, set up like um, licenses for each category, a certain amount, which with the council and the zoning board was ready to go with what they felt comfortable with, their temperature was. Uh, I believe that once we get this started and, and people see that it's not going to be the demise of the town, mm-hmm. that we'll be able to expand and do more uh, in Newark, which is what we want to do. We want to be able to grow it in a way uh, that people begin to see it uh, as medicinal, as as holistic, as other opportunities that we begin to educate people around what's going on. I mean, I think alcohol is more uh, detrimental mm-hmm. than marijuana in the first Absolutely. place. But yeah. all, all of these things, people begin to see for themselves that it's not going to create dope addicts on every corner. You know, right. all of the stories that exist is why the state is moving very slowly and timidly with this thing. And, and uh, you know, I think people have to get a chance to see that that's not the case. Has the uh, court ordered federal monitor on the police help lower the police misconduct in the city? A- absolutely. And I-, I think because of our relationship with them. Look, you got people who have a consent decree for 20 years. Oakland mm-hmm. has been a consent decree mm-hmm. for 20 years. And some of the stuff has never changed because the city and the police aren't working with them. We're right now struggling with our guys, you know, uh, the consent decree folks saying, look, we've met all these things. It's time for you to go. Like, you, we done spent so much money uh, on this, but we've 
changed the makeup of the police department. We've created a civilian complaint review board. Uh, you know, we've made new policies and practices in the police department. It's a completely different department than it was when I was a kid. And I can say that because I was victimized by the police department that I'm now in charge of. Me wow. too. <laughs> I was gonna ask you too. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. I was gonna ask, you know, uh they said last year they stopped it where if there's a stolen car that police right. are no longer allowed to chase. Is that true? And and did they change that back? Uh yep. Not not completely. Okay. So the state has now uh, given orders where if they if there's a commission of a felony they see other things going on, specific acts that you could chase. You know, back when Newark was the stolen car capital of the world and everybody yeah. was chasing these stolen cars, a lot of people were getting killed uh, because of that in, in accidents. The people in the cars, people that are watching. Mm-hmm. And so they, they shut it down. Like if, if, if you don't see these guys doing a crime, then you can't chase them. Uh, now that's changing. Uh, but that, that's public outcry. People are complaining uh, about these cars with the key fobs in them and they're taking them doing other crimes. Mm-hmm. So all of this stuff is beginning to come to a head. I was also going to ask, uh, in 2020, they said there was uh, police officers in Newark didn't fire any shots at all at people. Yeah. Now, how can we, whatever you yeah. did in Newark, <laughs> how can we do that around the country? Because that's, that's, that's amazing, because people talk ish about Newark all day long, but the fact yeah. that there was no police shooting? That's, that's right. That's, yeah. We, got, we, we just have to stay at it. I mean, we, 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 we broke that record in terms of, like, the police. The next year we had one, and then after that we had two, but... You know, there was times when we had 20, 30, Mm -hmm. you know. So I think the training, uh, the new training helps a lot. Like we, there's the academy training, then we do extra training Mm -hmm. for police officers, uh, you know, de-escalation, all these other kind of training to change it in policies, and that we actively recruited local police officers Mm -hmm. who live in that community. You see, it's people's cousins and aunts and uncles that's on the police department who live in those communities. So their view of it is different. You know, they have a different set of trauma that they deal with as opposed mm-hmm. to the different police kind of trauma. You come from other neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. They, the first thing they say is, I was afraid. They don't understand that fear is also part of racism. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because why are you afraid? That's right. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not afraid. Why are you afraid? Because my upbringing is different than yours. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and, you know, I look at you differently. They look at these people differently, so, which causes fear, which causes them to respond and act a different way. So we have to challenge that, you know, through training and through putting the right people there. I saw Dependent, what was your experience uh, with police brutality? Um, well, mine was just, you know, getting roughed up, thrown on the cars. And, you know, at one time, though, this was when I just got in laws of the underground. I had, I think I just bought a new car and I'm driving about maybe one o'clock in the morning and the cops pulled me over. No questions asked. Just threw me in a police car. One of them jumped in my car. And they took, uh, took me to the precinct. Uh, I believe it was on 17th Ave. Took me to the precinct. And the only reason why... I got out of it because at the time my road manager was a lieutenant on the police force. Mm-hmm. So a friend of his saw them bringing me into the police and said, what did he do? And he was like, oh, you know him? And he brought him to the side for a minute. They let me go and gave me my keys. So I can only wow. imagine what was going to happen to me at that time. Mm-hmm. And we talking about 92-ish, you know. Wow. So, wow. yeah. Now, I saw I saw on ABC7.com when Newark launched the, uh, the initiative to stop corporations from buying private mm-hmm. homes. How did that help the people in the world? Yeah, that's what I, what, what what Angela was just talking about. Mm-hmm. The 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 what what we're trying to do uh, ultimately. So we're gonna have a big meeting. Besides all the laws we're gonna pass, we're gonna be mm-hmm. having a big meeting uh, with smaller developers and nonprofits like the Urban League, La Casa de Don Pedro, mm-hmm. and we're gonna be very deliberate and intentional about raising the urgency. So we're gonna identify blocks and neighborhoods mm-hmm. and begin to purchase that stuff or begin to turn it over to those guys to do development and deed restrict it so they could be at an affordable rate. So we're going to allow these people, and we're going to give them the capital they need through the city side and try to get the state to in, invest in that stuff too because the banks and, it, and the federal institutions, they're not going to invest in it because you can't get the same rents in those areas mm-hmm. that you can get downtown. So, uh, you know, a lot of folks are not going to give you the money. That's why you have to have that cash capital mm-hmm. on hand. That's why those... Corporations can do that. They don't need a loan from the bank. Mm-hmm. You know, they can buy it because they have the cash outright. So we have to create an opportunity for ourselves to create a fund where local people can do the same thing very intentionally, buying the properties in their neighborhood and on their block and selling it or renting it to people in their own community for prices that we can afford. 
Mm. Well, get out there and vote That's today. Right. Ross Perot, Dupre, Kelly, Dupre, 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 Dupre. I just want to say, you know, I, I love Newark. Um, my son plays football in Newark. Yeah. Brick City Lions. That's right. Uh, I do roller skating in Newark. Mm-hmm. They, I think, they have the best roller skating rink in the tri-state area. Branchbrook, baby. If, if you've never been there, go down there. I have my wife's birthday party there. It's an amazing place to teach the kids how to roller skate. Yeah. So, um. And I eat in Newark. So shout to everybody out in Newark. And, of course, I do clubs in Newark, too. But, there you go. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But shout to Newark. And I appreciate you guys for joining us this morning. Hey, hey one thing I want to say, man, before we go, man, is everybody, this is a very, very important election. Make sure you come out today. You're voting the entire team, Baraka. You know, vote for your boy Dupre Kelly in that West Ward ballot C4 or 4C, however you want to say it. And uh, the mayor, A2, and the entire team, um, you know, and this gets a chance to make history for the culture of hip hop mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. You know, shout out to Sean Barrow who who uh, became the first elected official worldwide. Yep. But I still get the opportunity to become the first platinum selling hip hop artist in the United States of America, becoming an elected official. So uh, it's big for the culture. It's not. It's bigger than me, man. It's big mm-hmm. for our city, and uh, you know, we we got a we got a job to do today, man. So get out there and vote for the entire team, Baraka. Yes, Right. And if you haven't checked out uh, the book of Baraka, oh yeah, uh, Audible, oh yeah, yeah you yeah. know, I forgot definitely, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what made you want to create that? Uh, Audible and NJ Pack, they jumped right me. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dog yeah, cast, yeah. Dog cast. He rashed me until I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it though. It's, it's, it was a great opportunity. I would have never done it if he wouldn't have came. Yeah. So I appreciate wow. them. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, get out there and vote. Yeah. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 